Okay, we're here with Melina Leon, filmmaker behind a Song Without a Name, and the very first female Peruvian director to appear in the Cannes Film Festival. So, um, please tell us the story of how this subject matter of your film uh, came to you and inspired you. Sure, I was studying film direction at Columbia in New York, and I was looking actually for, for a story I had already uh, uh, I was supposed to start writing something uh, for a feature film. And this was your thesis, or this was it wasn't my thesis. The thesis is usually just a short film. Okay. But you are supposed to start at least a script. Okay. So that was so that was a long time ago, and um, my mom was visiting, and she is the one that told me the story that my father in Peru had received a phone call from this French lady that was just calling to thank him for the articles he had written like 30 years before, which I thought it's crazy, it's unbelievable, it's like the past coming back. So uh, she had become a mother herself, and uh, the thought of, the idea of giving her own baby away uh, for adoption was just, too much. It was something that she couldn't understand. Um, so she she wanted to understand uh, her mother. So she went back to Peru with the help of her husband, uh, who was Peruvian. Um, they both started investigating and found out that she was never given an adoption, that she had been stolen and um, the whole thing. And she got to meet her mother. And actually, she she had a, a very good life in France. The family that had adopted her didn't know what they were doing. Um, so she was able to luckily create a, a good bond with her biological mother. It wasn't, uh, I mean, after everything that happened, uh, they were able to rebuild their, their ties, a little bit at least. So um, yeah, that's, that's what inspired me. I just felt like, There was something miraculous about this, about this lady, the phone call, the return, like what are the odds of this bond to stay after all this uh, mess, and all this corruption, I don't know, there was something that I couldn't explain and I guess that's, that's what fuels, uh, gives you the energy to make a film because you, you want to understand somehow. Um, and uh, in personal terms, I think it means, for me, it means that I was uh, making my life in New York and uh, in a way that's another escape and this was signaling, signaling me, you can't escape. And so this was kind of like following in your father's footsteps in a way um, by preserving a, a story that um, a lot of people may not have heard and may be important to tell for future generations, no? Yes, in a way it's it's following my father's steps, um, but I always thought he was a very stressed man because he had to report every day and give bad news to people. So that's why I never became a journalist or a political journalist at least. Um, I figured I, I've always observed him and um, I, in a way I felt sorry for him because this whole thing got to him, this, this, all this violence got to him uh, many times. Um, and then I figured, yes, I want to do what he does, tell these stories, but I want to take the time to do them. Maybe I took too much time, but, <laughs> but, um, but yes, uh, you're correct. I think there is some line that I'm following. So what um, didn't you learn in film school? What uh, didn't prepare you for this project? It's a great question, nobody asked that. Um, what didn't I didn't learn in film school? Wow, many things I didn't learn in film school. It's, it was an, uh, a film school in the US, so basically they teach you about their system, but uh, I didn't know anything about co-production with Europe. Um, I didn't know anything about distribution, uh, how to sell it, um, many things. At the same time, I guess I did learn um, tenacity that is required. 
They, they really push you to do a short film every every four months, I think, or every in every semester you're supposed to do something, um, basically by yourself. So I think that in a way prepares you. Um, but yeah, there, there's a number of things that, that you don't know. But basically, it's, it's regarding financing for somebody who's not in the system. And actually, that would be good if they teach it because many Americans don't have uh, access to funding and uh, it would be good for them to, to know how to fund a film uh, outside the Hollywood system or uh, the equity or all that. Uh, how it works in other countries and things like that. Not only just for South Americans or I guess as they call it foreigners. Um, so yeah, that's that's one thing um, that I wish I had learned. So what did you learn from the project then in terms of uh, fundraising and getting uh, a first feature made? <laughs> Well, um, the, the, you have to try everything, uh, get to know all the funds. I had no idea about the funds. I had no idea about uh, Huber Balls, uh, not that I got it, but uh, all those things that you can apply to. Um, there is the fund from France, the Switzerland, the, um, the Spanish one I got, uh, Ibermedia, Nican. Um, basically, I, how to prepare the project, how to make it attractive, how to make the story more attractive. Um, it's hard. It's hard. They, you've never made a film before, so they don't know. They they don't trust you. I'm sure a lot of juries were men, and you know, it, it makes it worse. I, people don't believe it, <laughs> but um, I think I, I notice it. Like they just don't identify with female stories and female director um, so you have to really work uh, to make it attractive to make them see the film um, yes uh, I mean apart from that uh, I guess I learned uh, to try everything we did Kickstarter too um, and in the end we, we ended up uh, doing equity as well and, so it's it's crazy how it got funded. It ended up being Peruvian, Spanish, uh, USA, um, even Switzerland had to do with it in the end. Um, yeah, everywhere participated. And um, it, it, I keep learning until this day. I, I'm still clearing the music rights and all that. So it's been tough. I'm director producer, so. so a lot of it comes down to believing in yourself and your project and knowing how to communicate that belief to other people yeah a lot of it comes down to that uh, more than anything I'll say like you get a lot of rejection so you have to stay balanced um, meditation so meditation I, every time every time I can I recommend it I, I think that helps you to get perspective um, because um, it's a system that makes you compete so if you don't win then you feel bad <laughs> if you win you feel great but then how about you are rejected more than and uh, then if you win too much then maybe uh, some people have this sickness of becoming arrogant and then uh, you see their work it starts lacking something, no, I think. Um, it reflects when you start getting ideas in your head uh, that you're too much, uh, you're great. Uh, then the films, uh, yes, I, they are not, uh, I think, as good. And obviously, if you have a problem with self-esteem and you think you are bad, no, you're gonna annoy people have to have certain level of security. So what um, might be your message to other filmmakers like you who come from a marginalized community that maybe hasn't had a lot of 
uh, opportunities in the film industry so far or had a platform? What would I say to people who are in, um, I guess, developing countries? Um, I guess there's many things I realize now that um, the state of the planet is so bad that in a way favors uh, us uh, who come from indigenous communities, <laughs> not that I, who are half indigenous or are close to indigenous people, in the case of my past was denied by my family, in any case I was raised very western, but I look uh, I'm mixed, uh, in half indigenous at the very least. Um, and we're very close to all that culture uh, that can actually now be in the front. Can Many people are realizing the value of our traditions and that um, in a way uh, natives, indigenous people have contributed a lot to the preservation of the planet. So now it's time to search more in our past. Um, half my family was denied. So that's one, and I'm sure for many filmmakers it's the same. Uh, it, it's, it's just what happens. It's like my, my actress, she looks 100% indigenous or real indigenous and she, her Quechua is, is not good. It's very, very minimal, minimal because um, she, she was not taught to, to speak it. She, she was forbidden to speak Quechua. Uh, because uh, it's the language of the oppressed people, so they didn't want her to have an accent. And, and now she's realizing oh, everyone wants to know about Quechua. And she's now studying with her mom, who actually translated the parts in Quechua that you see in the film. Um, so now we are in this moment where we are reuniting with our culture. So more than funding, funding will appear. Funding will appear, the world is not so crazy that doesn't see our value. People are starting to see our value, so it will appear, just look in the right place. Beautifully put, and that's a beautiful parallel too between yourself and your main actress in terms of um, reuniting with your roots because yes. of the project. Yes. Um, can you tell me about uh, the atmosphere of the film? Because mm -hmm. it has such a distinct uh, look and uh, clearly a lot of thought went into that. Sure, um, it has, uh, the atmosphere of the film has a lot to do with the <sighs> photographs that appear in the newspapers in those days. Like in the very beginning? You should yes, look. like those photographs. Uh, that's the way I learned everything, basically. As a child in Peru, growing up in the 80s, uh, I, I wasn't in the streets. <laughs> I was pretty much at home or in a school. Um, and the way I learned about reality was at night, my father will show up at home with the newspaper of the day, and they were the pictures that you see at the very beginning of the film, uh, just basically corpses and um, tragedies, uh, war, basically. Um, so that's my memory of the, of the time, very much. So um, we wanted that feeling. Um, also, the black and white has to do with the lack of color, the lack of joy, um, pretty obvious like that. Uh, mm -hmm. And then um, as a first time filmmaker also, you search for certain style, certain distinction. I can't deny that. Um, also practical reasons, the black and white, um, we had the very low budget. So you are bound to make mistakes with a low budget and color. I heard uh, something that reassured me in in this uh, choice of black and white was an in conference that uh, the Austrian filmmaker director uh, Haneke made about white ribbon. He was saying that he was afraid of making mistakes, and that's why it's black and white. 
Um, so I figured if he's afraid with his budget, can you imagine? I, I, I should do black and white now. So um, that um, then we made it foggy because really I think our director of photography is right when he's when he says that we always have summers in, in Lima. It's not that we don't have a summer and a spring and autumn. We have it, but uh, in those days, everything was so violent that we really can't remember the summers. <laughs> or, or, or that's not what we remember. We remember the long winter. And that's why we, we were ready to shoot actually months before May. We were ready to shoot around uh, November the year before, but um, it was impossible. It, it, the winter was in, in the pages, in, in the script, in the memory, so actually it was Cindy that pushed us to wait. Uh, and I thank him for that because, yeah, he was right. Our memory of it is it's foggy. Well, it ended up working out really well. I think um, the the compositions and the contrasts and all of it really works in black and white and adds to the sense of isolation and loneliness and um, the grim tone of the, the tragedy that unfolds in the film. Yeah, 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 it's, it, was, it was the right decision. It was nerve-wracking because it took so many years to make the film and when, once we were ready, we had to wait even more for the winter to come. Um, it was excruciating. But totally worth it. So, what will you do next? Do you have any idea what you might be drawn to follow up this film with? Sure. Um, I was thinking uh, of creating a story with Pamela, the actress of the film, but we're still working on it. We don't know yet because um, it's a story very close to her heart, and it's not easy. I, I for her to let go of it and make it a movie and. Uh, so that's one project that um, I wanted to make, but I'm not sure if it's as we have been working on it, uh, some difficulties seem to be in the horizon. So it might be a third film probably, uh, because I, I, I wanted to, to do it quickly, but it looks like it's gonna, it's gonna need time. I, I don't wanna quit, I, but... Uh, I thought it was less close to Pamela than actually I'm realizing now. So. Um, and yeah, there is a third, uh, I mean, the, the other project that I had in mind would be set in Cusco. Uh, and it would be about the life of a kid that was meant to be a painter but passed away very young. And a family of craftsmen that I know in Cusco. So that's, that's what's in my mind So st still drawing from very personal stories and Definitely. getting in touch with um, your collective history. Absolutely, absolutely. That's, that's what uh, is coming to me and I trust instinct. I think uh, this is one of the lessons. I guess that you asked me before uh, what didn't films could teach you. I think now I have a better answer. I think. Uh, they didn't teach me to trust my, inst my instinct. They didn't stress that enough. Um, they were a wonderful people that opened doors for me to the world cinema, like Richard Peña show us like Chinese films and Korean films, Latin America. Uh, but I, I think they don't talk enough about how important it is to, to trust your your gut, your that that thing that is called instinct that um, people perceive it. People feel your honesty when, when you follow that. It, I guess it can be translated to your heart, to your unconsciousness, maybe all those. Um, but uh, nobody tells you. You have to find it again. Hey, this is Eric from MyOwnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.